What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Yala, your thrice weekly podcast where we talk about the hottest news and the chattiest topics and anything else that's trending or interesting with a touch of what, parents? With a touch of the most amazing guests ever. Touch have. of the most amazing guest. Sorry, really bad grammar. <laughs> yeah, this but, yeah, too excited. Too excited. <laughs> you guys yeah. are not touching me, right? Yeah, 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 yeah it's no, like no, no. Oh, you didn't get the brief. Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought I was signing up for an oral only. No, wait, no, wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that no. would be audio yeah. only. Yeah. Audio only. Audio, audio only. only. Sorry. Audio yeah. only. Yeah. Correct. So, uh, we do have a very special, interesting guest today. Uh, we first met him on the set of a TV show that is coming out. Uh, like by the time you hear this, it would the first episode will be out. The second mm-hmm. episode is coming out on first April. It'll be on YouTube, and we'll talk more about it later. Yep. But we have none other than the chairman of One People SG, uh, senior minister of state for MCI and MOH, and a whole host of other other titles, <laughs> Doctor Janil Putucherry. Hi guys, thanks for having yeah. me. Here. Or as Wikipedia yeah. says, the honourable. Uh, honorable. The honorable. The honorable. Wikipedia has honored me. Yeah, you haven't seen that. <laughs> no, have it's the honorable Janil Putucherry. Okay, I think this is because overseas, that's how they say it, right? By, by default, uh, by default. By I default. Think, yeah. If you're a minister or anything, or yeah. MP, you become honorable. Honorable. So we, do we have to refer to you as the, your honor? honor. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> But it's not spelled correctly. Uh, it's, in, it's not in the British with the honour. Oh yeah, it's uh, American honour. So it's not so on. Yeah, yeah, not, so, missing, not so honourable. Uh, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mostly honourable, but missing but, a bit. But still, <laughs> still we're, super, we're super excited about this. Yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, the context is we met uh, a few months ago for the first time for the filming of a CNA show called Regardless of Race. Mm. Uh, then another time a few weeks ago for the part two of that. Uh, and yeah, we've always enjoyed talking to Janil and we figured, why not have him on our podcast? No, it's great yeah. to be here. Thank you. And I, and thank you for coming on the show. You know, you guys, uh, I think it was very interesting to see the comments that you made and, mm. and the, the, the things that you engaged in on our mm. filming. And yeah. we're going to be in the show. Like, we haven't been edited out. You have not been edited out. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> this is like the pity, the pity podcast yeah, that I've given right. after editing. Yeah, it's coming out tonight. Uh, folks. Yeah. It's too late to make a pitch. I'm just saying. He was telling his team, hey, you know, we edited them out. Let me just go... Let me just go on yeah. their podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throw them away. So, so you, we were talking about this before. You, you, you have been on a podcast before. Yes, yes. Sir. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so did you have any reservations before coming on our podcast? Or not? Uh, not really. I mean, because I had a chance to meet you guys. Uh-huh. And I knew you're quite uh, personable and funny. And mm. uh, Well, I do listen to your podcast as well. Oh. So I kind of know what I'm getting into. Oh, that was what I was fishing uh, for. You were fishing for. Okay, there's a plug there. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, no, but, but actually, can we just... Um, uh, since we're talking about the show itself already, right? And mm. then, like, uh, I think a lot of people have watched this series, regardless of race. Uh, it is definitely one of the, I, I would say one of the, if you just mention it to any layperson on the street, regardless of race, they probably would have heard or seen a clip or something from it before. Mm. So actually, how did you get involved with uh, the creation of this show? Like, was it that from the get-go or, or how, how was it, how is it that you were involved in, uh, in your capacity as the, uh, you know, chairman of uh, One People SG. Yeah, well, um, it, the credit or, or blame uh, mm. all lies with uh, the executive producer, Sharon Han, uh, mm. who's uh, really okay. a fantastic talent. Um, I made a speech in parliament about about the phrase regardless of race mm. and about the issues of race and racism here in Singapore. Mm. So she then reached out and said, hey, you know, uh, this is all talk, no action. You want to do something about it? And so she had a pitch about a show. Uh, that, she, said, she said that. Uh, uh, like, I, I, I'm, she I'm, said. I'm making it a bit more polite. She's uh, very <laughs> frank, but uh, Sharon, if you're listening to this, <clears throat> you know what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> she's, uh, yeah, she, she was very frank and uh, asked me if I would get involved. So she had sure. a pitch for a show that she wanted to make. Um, now, in the end, the show that we made was not quite the same uh, mm. in terms of the techniques and the, uh, the narrative, but it hit on the same subject, which is race and racism in Singapore. Mm. Uh, so that was supposed to be a one-off, you know? Uh, okay. and, and then, well, we, we kind of did a few other topics along the way. So mm. now, uh, the one that's coming out tonight yeah. and part two tomorrow is, uh, I think it's it's my my eighth or ninth show that I've done with her, you know, mm. Uh, mm. and her team. So they're, mm. they're very skilled at, at sort of getting at some of these hard-hitting social harmony issues. Sure. So that's why I, I keep going back. Okay, so what's, what's the general log line for the show? Like if you were to do an elevator pitch for the show, for someone who's never heard of it, like why would they watch it? Yeah, well, f- five years ago, we did a show. <laughs> <laughs> no. But, so the title of this show coming out tonight is Regardless of Race, Five Years On. Uh, and really the issue is, well, after five years of talking about it, having podcasts and mm. articles and getting a lot more dialogue, 
Uh, where have we come to with this issue of being a, a society regardless of race? Mm. Um, then what does the show find? The show finds that actually it's a bit more complicated than that. It's actually a mm. lot more complicated. And I think that's where you guys came in, right? Mm. That yeah. there's this whole issue of, is it just about talking? No, we got to take mm. action. Is it us taking action against somebody, uh, with somebody? Is it all of us? Is it who, who are the culprits, who are the good guys, who are the bad guys? And well, the show is about making it clear it's mm. not that simple. It's not about bad guys and good guys. Mm. It's the kind of collective action and the collective challenges that we face. I see. Should I give away the, will this come out after the show? Is it okay? Is it like a um, uh, spoiler alert? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Because yeah. people might listen to it over the next few days and yeah. 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 Well, we, we go deep into some of the issues that uh, you know we know that are on the ground. So for example, mm. uh, workplace discrimination on the basis of race. Mm. Uh, and I think that hits people really hard. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's your lifeline, you know, it's your, it's yeah. your livelihood. And then things like, for example, rental discrimination, and PM Lee talked about this at his National Day rally. Um, we talk a little bit about the science of why people have biases. So that's mm. a bit where you guys did the this mm. little little uh, experiment. Exp experiment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you were surprised. I mean, there was yeah. a little bit of- We was, were verified as not racist, if well, I recall. Well, that's no. not quite how I remember it. I'm just saying. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, there, there was some swearing and some surprises, right? I mean, and, yeah, yeah. And, and that's part of it to really mm. surprise people about how much some of these biases are internal. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so there's a, and there's some, you know, there's some really powerful uh, pieces that we did where I think people confront the extent of uh, their own personal biases and yeah. whether they've said or done the right things mm. in the past. Mm -hmm. So, so when you're participating in that, is there part of you? thinking like, oh shit, this is too complicated to distill even into a 30 minute episode or we can't talk about it, we should like, do you have that sort of thing? Because you're, I think- You're asking you like, what, like entering the minefield. Uh. Yeah. I mean, it is a minefield. Yeah, right? exactly, so exactly. Do you ever feel that trepidation, you know? Yeah, every time, every time. Every time. Yeah, so I, I, I'm not a, I'm not, I don't have a, a media background, right? I, mm. don't, I, don't, I don't come from, from a sort of a, a production or a, a content creation side. So I don't have any other experience, right? So to mm -hmm. me, What's normal is that you turn up on the set and then you start arguing about what you're going to film and what mm, lines yeah. you're, you're literally, we're literally rewriting the script on sure. the uh, on the day as we're about to film because there are these sensitivities that you have to navigate quite carefully mm. um, because the, there's a risk that a show like this could become gratuitous, right? And people, yeah. you know, you're just, you're just looking for clickbait and trying yeah. to like make people annoyed. Um, or it can be so bland that you just never push the envelope mm. in getting people to think about some of these things. Yeah. So, so that's that's part of the the process, uh, and um, it, I think it's come up. With, it's resulted in a very interesting production process yeah. where we're just trying to calibrate that all along. But my sense is that uh, it's worth doing only if we are pushing the envelope and getting people engaged in a difficult topic. Mm, mm, mm. Um, but uh, but it, that, that is always at the back of my mind. Sure. Am I overdoing it? So from doing it for the past five years, you said, mm. um, how anything about being immersed in that topic that has surprised you, about what you feel, about what you see around you, how you see it's developing, is your optimism still there, more, you're more pessimistic? Whoa. Well, uh, yeah, lots of lots of things have surprised me, uh, but different from the first episode to now. Mm. The mm. first episode, uh, what really surprised me was the uh, reception. Uh, mm. You know, because we came out with a forty-five minute episode, and then I think they, they cut three or four little small digital products. And to this day, I've got people coming up to me saying that you know they use that in their class, uh, they've used it as part of their orientation, as part of the discussion, and uh, it doesn't surprise me now. But it did then. How mm. how positive. Uh, the reception was because actually we highlighted some really negative and difficult issues, mm. but there was a positive warmth to it that we wanted to talk about it. This time round, uh, what surprised me was the amount of material we had. Mm. We started off wanting to make a one 45 minute show and yeah. we had so many people with lots of good things to say that we then it, it expanded to a two part show. Uh, mm. So that's a, it's a real difference. You know, people are now really willing to talk about it. Um, there's lots of people out there who've started doing things about it. Uh, some people have, uh, begun with some like fundamental scientific research. Some people are running classes. Some people are doing podcasts about the yeah. subject, mm, like you yeah. guys. I've, no, you see, I'm doing a plug for you. You could just say the name podcast or <laughs> <laughs> podcast pod, pod as well. That would be helpful. Uh, wait, 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 what are we doing again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> la, but yes. L YLB, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Okay. I'm in the right place. Please right carry place. on. Uh, Honorable uh, Janil. Uh, okay, yeah. I try not to dishonor the, <laughs> the quality of this podcast. But you know, but you guys are part of this. You know that I think if five years ago, if I said let, let's make a show, yeah. and go and find people who are doing content creation around mm. issues of social harmony, race, I think we'd have struggled. I know we'd have struggled. Mm. 
But this time round, it was like, whoa, we have tons of people that we could interview. Mm. The people that we did interview had lots of good things to say. So we kind of bloated it out to two two episodes. Yeah. So that, that was really a surprising in a good way. I uh, see. So actually, um, now that we're talking about it, uh, five years ago, yeah, it was quite a big leap, right? In terms of uh, the kind of content that this show was putting out. So why do you think, uh, Janiel, five years ago, why do you think you were the ideal candidate to be the one putting this, other than the speech, you know, the speech <laughs> being good. But what in your background prepared you for this moment? Because I, I always feel like, you know, especially when you come from a different field, like we did, came, we came from different fields in the media, um, but there were certain things we picked up along the way in our corporate careers, everything, that prepared, prepared us better for this. Uh. So what in your background do you think prepared you to be this communicator and, and, and to bring up this, these touchy topics? Uh? Well, part of it was the fact that I had taken on the chairmanship of one people that SG. Okay. Uh, so that's a rich society. That was which year? You have to pin me down on this. I think that was <laughs> okay, okay, six, will... seven years ago. I think. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. It was, some, it was about a year pre, regardless of race, okay. pre, pre the first year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. So I, I, so that kind of, um, I'd been thrown in the deep end about uh, in terms of running the organization and mm. some of the work that we do, which is all about race and racial harmony. Um, but part of that of course, is on the back of an interest that I had. I mean, I, I, I spent a lot of my time overseas uh, mm. studying in uh, UK, Ireland, and then Australia. Um, and so, you know, the, the experience of being a minority, of, of being an mm. ethnic minority, whether it's in Singapore or in other parts of the world, there are some things which are in common, but there are yeah. some things which are different. And mm. you sort of, you know, you pick up on the good as well as the bad. Um, so, well, it was something that I, that I had thought about. And I, I think, to me, it is uh, one of those issues which are central to the Singapore narrative. Mm. And, and I think generally speaking, Singaporeans accept it. Um, but we're not the only country that has an issue of ethnicity or race central to our narrative. Mm. And yet we've dealt with it in such a different way. So it was something that uh, going into politics that I had thought about and I had, uh, and I had uh, some views about it. So of course, that, I think that came out both in my chairmanship of OPSG, it came yeah. out of my speech, and then mm. Sharon looked at it and said, aha, here's the sucker I'm going to go after. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, mm. No, but even just uh, you know, being a presenter, thinking on your feet, being able to react quickly to what people are saying. Uh, I mean, I'm not trying to just toot your horn and everything, but toot toot. You, 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 do, you do look like you've done it for like, as a professional for very long and everything. Uh, so how, I mean, how, how do you overcome all that, you know, that initial uh, stage fright, so to speak? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's just you've got to do it a few more times until you get numb to it, right? Mm. I, I mean, the first time I do remember when, I, when we did the first show, um, it was difficult, and yeah. the CNA team, uh, you know, credit to them. They, 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 they had a lot of patience. It's like, you know, would you like to do that again? But what was difficult? You mean just the delivering of the lines and? Well, I, just... I, I didn't realize that it took so much hard work to look natural. And, you know, yeah. uh... <laughs> you know, art, you know, the naturalness on TV uh, yeah. requires a certain artificiality, yeah, right? Right. Yeah, right? Yeah, correct. Uh, correct. Uh, not like podcasts. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, so you know, I, you you sort of think, oh, I just turn up and be yourself, and then it turns out that you, if you are just being yourself uh, on TV while you're looking down at your phone and ignoring people around you, yeah. no, it doesn't work. You you gotta like have a certain persona, a certain engagement mm. uh, with the the interviewee and the, and the, and the, and, the, and the things that's happening around you. So I learned along the way, and uh, the, the CNA crew they really uh, they, they they they. But they were you when younger? Were you the one who will perform at birthday parties? Oh goodness, good, no, no <laughs> way, class club, no class way, club. no way. <laughs> Like opposite. when studying podi uh, podiatry, you were like, oh, no, guys, look at me. No, 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 no. I'm the complete opposite. Like my mom was like, you're making a TV show? Like what happened to my son? You know, uh -huh. like, no, I was the bookish, quiet kid. I, I really did really? not like to get up on stage. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if I had to get on stage to like, you know, uh, take a book prize or something, it's like, you know, can I, can I, can I call in sick today? I really don't. Yeah. yeah really. So, uh, but, but by the time I made the show, uh, 20, uh, 2016, um, 2016 or 2017 um, I'd been in politics since mm, 2011 mm. right so well politics you have to be in the public eye quite a lot so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, th I I think I, I by that stage was no longer so shy about being in front of a camera or being mm, on stage so I see. so I don't know if that's what you're asking Terrence you know yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. did politics prepare me to become the host regardless of race no, I, was, I was going even further back to you know when you were practicing doctor and everything because uh, I mean communication I, everyone talks about doctors as you know bad handwriting and they don't really communicate well. So it's quite uh, refreshing when I meet uh, someone, a medical practitioner, who actually is you know communicates uh, as well, if not better than you know a professional host and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the stereotype is there, you know, um, and and we we 
I mean, I, I used to teach in, in medicine. I mean, at the medical mm-hmm. school and, and mm-hmm. also postgraduate. And um, uh, communication is one of those things we really have to get right in the mm-hmm. medical profession. And we do spend a lot of time teaching people and training people to, to get communication right. Yeah. Our handwriting still sucks. That's why we've gone for electronic <laughs> records, you know? Mm. Like, you know type everything yeah. and then you can, yeah. Smart nation. But, yeah. But, <laughs> but, but then if we spend our time maybe communicating in person a bit better, yeah. uh, verbally a bit better, it's very important to engage people on that basis. Mm. So, you know, That's just true. now you, you mentioned that uh, entering politics, you're in the public eye and all. So how do you balance, you know, anytime I would imagine someone enters politics, they know they are going to be polarizing. La. They know people are going to have opinions of them. I will totally admit that when I first saw you hosting a CNA program, I was like, yeah, la, just for the sake of it, la, the formality of it. Um, and because what, what do you mean the formality? Of like it, it's so, I can imagine it's so easy. Like we've heard many times, you know, a speech here and there by mm. a minister, a politician. And I will also say whenever I hear stuff coming out of a politician's mouth, I take it with a pinch of salt. Mm. Um, so when I saw the show, I was like, okay, la, it's like racial harmony day. It's going to be a pointless show. Oh, who's this Dr. Janil guy? Look you up. I'm like, yeah, la, he's just a mouthpiece and all that. And honor- I won't deny- Honorable mouthpiece. No? Honorable, honorable mouthpiece. yeah, very honorable. <laughs> Every word was like, ooh, honor, honor, honor. Yeah. <laughs> but I will admit that I had that sentiment. Yeah. You know? mm. And I can imagine other people having it that way. Like even having you on our podcast, I can imagine some people saying, okay, la, these people are hardcore PAP supporters and all. Yeah. Right? So how do you balance that? Because- Thankfully, through CNA, I've also had a chance to interact with other MPs and through stuff we have done, we have interacted with other MPs and they, you can never get to who they are, but meeting you to your credit, mm. it, it didn't feel that way. Yeah. How do you strike the balance? Well, I think the, you know, the, the sort of reaction that you have mm. um, about, uh, oh, it's, you know, the, is what you're saying something that it's pro forma, right? You're just, mm. you're just making a statement for the it's not uh, it's not wrong to ask that question, but if you ask that question, then are you willing to be persuaded by the facts mm-hmm. and, and by the behavior and, and then the outcome? And I think if you go in with that sort of healthy cynicism, but also a, a sort of an open mind to be engaged by what people say and the facts, that, that's not a bad thing. That means that yeah. you're, you're an informed listener, right? And mm. and and not an uncritical listener. Um, the 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 stereotype is like doctors, right? You stereotype mm. you you stereotype. All, all uh, uh, professions. Same like influencers and yeah, all that kind yeah. of stuff. Like you yeah. guys are influencers. Oh, oh man, am I? No, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you have influence or? No? Oh, oh, sorry. Burn. <laughs> oh, oh, burn. Burn. Sorry. Yeah. Drop. <laughs> okay, okay, we are going to be editing this. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, so so there's you know I mean there's always this grain of truth right because politicians um, we 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 could behave like that right yeah. yeah I mean we could be we could be quite gratuitous if. If, that, if that's the way our politics were. Mm. But I think one of the things we have in Singapore is uh, several, both structures as well as incentives to not be those types of politicians. That you've mm. got to mm. not just say it, but translate into action. And then not just talk at a high level of policy, but really get your hands dirty and get things done on the ground mm. uh, with your constituents. So if we can then deliver on that, hopefully we then persuade you we're not just a mouthpiece, or, you know, mouthing yeah. out hollow yeah. words, right? But but then it's not bad for you to hold us up to that standard, la, mm. rather than just simply take on faith that we are, we, are, we are doing the right thing. Mm, okay. So, so I think that's, the, that's the, the lens that I go in. I don't go in, and I think many of my colleagues don't go in on the basis that what you just described is a wrong mindset. Actually, no. It, mm. it's, it's more, well, it's our job, our duty, our mm. responsibility to persuade you that actually we are, we are of substance. Mm. And then, then I think that guides that balance that you're, you're mm. talking about. Okay. But, but so I yeah. guess the question comes from, I mean, even for us, when we see responses to you know, things that we talk about on the podcast, and they say, oh, you know, politicians are so out of touch with what's happening on the ground. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we know that politicians are having their meet the people sessions every week. If Even during COVID, it was virtual sessions and all that. Um, like, why do you think there's this, there's still this sentiment that, that politicians, or at least the, the, the ruling, ruling party, the, the government and everything, they're out of touch with the lay person on the ground, even though... Like you said, there's a lot of activity being done on the ground to meet people, to talk to people, to find out what the constituents want. That. Why do you think there's that perception? Well, well, partly it's because people don't know about our activity unless we mm. we have we, we we directly touch them. I don't mean touching mm. your mm. parents. Yeah, I'm yeah, just not, saying, not, yeah. Yeah, yeah. not the Will Smith kind of. No, touch, no. Right? Oh. Yeah. oh, we'll come to that. We'll come to that. <laughs> but, but unless unless we connect with them directly, they yeah. they don't know how many people I meet on my meet the people or my blog visits or my walkabouts mm. or my market visits. They only know whether I've met them, mm. right? Mm. So I think that's one level. Okay. Uh, and it's a it's a it's a natural sort of perceptual bias, but oh, but it's 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 there. Um, I think the second issue is when we 
talk about some of the issues that politicians mm. deal with and that people care about. I mean, that's where this sentiment comes up, right? People don't bring this up just for the sake of, well, let's talk about what we are going to eat or something. It's because yeah. you're discussing some important social issue. Um, well, the reality of important social issues is that not everybody is going to have the same view. Mm. Mm. So if I have a view which the politician is now not following, yeah. uh, my natural bias is to say, well, you are out of touch. Yeah. And then rather than saying you're out of touch with me, I'll say you're out of touch with everyone. everyone. Assuming that everyone is like you. Every, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. or that most people are like me. I mean, again, uh, that's a, a, a natural bias that we have. Mm. Um, so I think it, it, uh, it, it serves us as, as, as politicians. It, it's, it's our, in a way, our, our responsibility to recognize this mm. and that if uh, people are having a sense that we don't um, understand their views or that we don't uh, know their views, that we then have to reach out and connect and find out what those views are. Mm. engage with, with them. Now, that doesn't mean that we can then do exactly what, what they want because we have to balance what everybody else wants as well. Yeah. So that's a, well, that is the difficult task of political leadership. Mm. Mm. But does it, does it weigh you down, make you jaded, uh, or it energizes you? Did you hear me swearing as I came in? <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. That was you. <laughs> that was you. It's like, what? Another bunch of influencers. <laughs> and, uh, having to convince more people that I'm a nice guy. God damn it. No, no. It, it, well, it's, it's, I mean, it, it doesn't. I mean, I, I don't think I've become cynical yet. Uh, okay. Uh, or, or more. So, no. Um, you know, uh, it's, uh, there's a lot of activity. And mm. uh, some of that activity is quite energizing. And, mm. and the nature of politics, I found, now that I've been in it since uh, was it, 20, 11 years, um, is that things never stay the same. Mm. You know, so mm. the, the issues that matter are shifting, the way in which people respond are shifting, which means that you, as a, as a, as a, as a part of the community, but also uh, as part of politics, you have to shift your approach, your tactics, your, your, your uh, tools that you use. Uh, so you're always learning something new, you're always engaging with something new. So, mm. so mm. far, no, uh, not yet. Oh, okay, so you don't have like well, a wind down routine where you go down in a bath, put Kenny G, or maybe like Kenny every- Kenny G, so every, like how, <laughs> like, <laughs> How old do you think? No, okay, no, wait a minute. Or like every... It's all right. It's all right. Retro, like, he's retro. Like, oh, retro, yeah, retro. okay. Yeah, yeah, retro, cool. retro is like retro yeah, cool, yeah. 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 Or like maybe every every third Thursday of the month, you and your fellow MPs meet and no phones, you know, you all just go wild futsal, behind futsal. closed yeah. doors or something. <laughs> huh? They play futsal. Yeah, yeah futsal and, and all that. Yeah, yeah. Just like to... Or, or is it De kind of like... Decompress, like, like... Yeah, like yeah. decompress. Because like even it's after tough, for us, after a shoot, you're like, okay, like, you're like, even no, after no. a podcast, I need to like sit down without Harish like screaming at you. Mm, like, so now we know where the stress comes from. Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We contribute to, a lot to each other's yeah, yeah, stress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. How, how do you yeah. decompress from all that? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I, I uh, mostly I spend time with my family, mm. uh, my, my, my kids, my wife, my family. Um, I, I, there are things that I enjoy. I mean, I, I like being outdoors, running, cycling. Mm. Um, uh, so like, like hardcore cycling like no, spandex no, cycling no. <laughs> oh, that I, one is uh, Terence's yeah, pet peeve yeah, yeah I, I, I'm not so good on the spandex you know, okay, there's little okay, bits okay. that no. um, but no I do like cycling I'm not a hardcore like but draft. Road, road cycling or um, I, 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 I'm happy Everything. to cycle okay. most places Yeah, okay. I, I'm not so into the like throw yourself down a mountain with all the knee, knee, pa knee guards and, okay, you know, so yeah PCN PCN, PCN roads, roads yeah, yeah. Roads, yeah. Okay. but I, I mean uh, I used to Cycle to work, uh, so mm. I used to commute. So I'm quite sort of comfortable cycling on roads as well. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but but yeah, so cycling, running, um, yeah, you know, just makan with friends. Uh, yeah. You know, when we do have social lives as well, once mm. in a while. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, I don't know about the the MPs all go wild in one room. Uh, that, that's not quite. How <laughs> no, that's like the Fight Club, lah. Right? The rule number one: you never speak of Fight Club. You never speak. Maybe about it's fight like yeah, Let yeah. Go Club or like uh, Own Self Party, Own Self Club oh, or something. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we used to, uh, not party, uh, but uh, we used to have a, uh, a football team that we used to play a long time ago. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I don't know whether post-COVID we will resurrect that. But once in a while, we do get together. Wait, like a minister's football team? Kind uh, of MPs, MPs, MPs. MPs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, MP. So you're by different ministries, is it? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's MPs, not ministries. So uh, it was yeah. just the members of parliament. This is, I mean, I was like, you know. Uh, the With opposition as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, okay, we we okay, go and play uh, a few. This was, but this was. Several years pre, back. Pre-COVID. Uh, well, yeah. I think, yeah, it was pre... But the opposition always team up by themselves, is it? 
<laughs> no, they, they do select. They select. You select uh, your teammates. Right? Oh, no then la. the opposition <laughs> always lasts. <laughs> no la. We don't play against each other. We go and play other teams. Oh, play other so teams. parliament team versus another team. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Parliament versus non. Uh, wait, no, the so, LMPs or something. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's like it's like some club. You know, like the, oh, the, oh, okay, okay. the like the lawyers will have a club oh, or the unionists yeah, will have a club. Yeah, yeah. It's like oh, yeah, it's all for fun, for fun lah. Uh, but does it did it ever get like like fisticuffs? Like, yeah, yeah, fisticuffs. Uh, red cards. No lah. You think we can? You think we have so much energy to go and do this kind of thing? <laughs> We're like, dude, you're gonna run for the ball. No lah, it'll come to me. <laughs> I don't like trace together. I'm gonna tackle you. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> no lah, no lah. No. Because I mean, the the reason why I asked this question is also because I mentioned that we have interacted with MPs and politicians, and there's always this. I can imagine why they have to be on guard lah all mm. the time, mm. especially now with social media. People can take something, take it out of context. Yeah. But is that something that you? Have almost internalized, or you're still very cautious about, or like before you came on our podcast, you got your team to research our history, you know that kind yeah. of shit. CSIU, is that yeah, it? CSI, <laughs> correct, correct. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think it's not wrong to have some degree of uh, of uh, prudence. I mean, you know, yeah. you you are you you know you can imagine you're making a, a comment, and uh, let, let's say I go and comment on a foreign policy, right? I mm, let, yeah. a, let a loose comment out here. Yeah. I mean, that that can do serious damage to our to our to our country, you know, and to, so. There's a certain prudence that we have to to take. It's part mm, of our mm, responsibility mm. as our job, um, but but it it happens in in many different circumstances. It's not just when you come to do podcasts with influencers. You know, it's like you mm. have how you speak and how you present yourself to the press and so forth. Is that mm. training, yeah, like media training and all that you all receive? Um, not not a lot, not a no, lot. Like TikTok training or anything. No? <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, yeah, I, I, I have. Yeah, no, no. So you don't have a TikTok. You, you I, use I TikTok. have not ventured into. Oh. Yeah, but yeah, why yeah. not? Because there are quite a few politicians who are quite active on oh, social Ongi media. Kam, Ongi Kam mm. just launched his TikTok. Like. Yeah, and he got yeah. eighteen thousand followers. Because he did a video about when you can put on your mask and yeah. take off your mask. So, so yeah. So yeah. how do how do your peers and all navigate it? Because social media is a whole different. Game, no, that means right? that I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. Do you need to get approval to have a TikTok account? No, like no, do you need no. to go and like, oh, uh, no, no, no. I'm, uh, I'm, submit, a, a, submit a requisition form, <laughs> three, yeah. three chops, go to the committee. No, yeah. it doesn't work like that. In you, this I video, mean, I only do four twerks, not three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, yeah. no. Right, no. <laughs> I need to twerk for my first yeah, video. Yeah, yeah. Like there is four, no four seconds. <laughs> there is no SOP on TikToking. No, uh, <laughs> no, no. It's just I think it's. Uh, I, Actually, and it's something that we do talk about as yeah. uh, as yeah. politicians. It's, actually, a lot of it is what our comfort level is. Mm. Uh, what what can you carry with some degree of authenticity, right? Yeah. So even if you look at let's say uh, not TikTok but uh, Facebook or Instagram, sure. it's not just being there. It's what you do and how mm. you post, right? So there are some people that literally they are on IG. Their their stories are every half an hour they got something mm. to say. And then there's some like old fuddy that is like me. It's like once a day if you're lucky, I post one photo and a little bit of a caption. It's yeah, it's the same platform yeah. we both have an account but we're engaging with different audiences and doing it in a different way because mm. that's what is authentic to us sure. mm. there isn't a i mean you do have a team that helps you with uh, various things like let's say you're giving a speech and you need to draft a speech and you probably have a team that helps you also look through but and no, well it depends so if you're making a speech on behalf of a ministry let's mm. say or you or on behalf of a policy position then yes you, you do need to have that prudence that due diligence that what you're saying reflects not just your personal views but the ministry and the government and so forth yeah but but if i'm making a speech in my constituency uh, no ain't, ain't nobody drafting that speech for me you know oh, really? i do it myself oh. uh li- likewise if i do it in any other capacity where it's it's my views personally then yeah, yeah i just do it myself Oh wow! I I always thought there was this army of like uh, social media interns or something following uh, every minister around. Yeah, me. let me know where they are. I want to speak to them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you not supporting them? <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, I think um something that that uh, a very noob question that even I will be I I won't admit that I need to ask is what does the when when you when you are senior minister of state within a a ministry like what's the difference between being the minister itself. And a senior minister of state within the ministry. Yeah. Oh, the minister is the boss. The senior minister is the junior. The oh, fi- really? Fantastic. It's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. so it's just it's just, you're straight yeah. hier- it's just straight up hierarchy like that. Uh, well, it's it's it is hierarchy in terms of seniority. Yeah. But it's also the way in which portfolios are assigned out. So usually the people who are the junior political office holders, mm. which are the ministers of state, right? Yeah. So you have the mm. se- senior minister of state and minister of state. Mm. We are the junior political office holders. You also have uh, parliamentary secretaries. Uh, we tend to have portfolios for multiple ministries. Mm, okay. And then we tend to have 
non-ministry portfolios as well. Okay. Uh, whereas the minister is responsible for the ministry. The whole ministry. And so th they tend to have less of these sort of uh, other mm. things out there that cut across until you're super, super senior. The, you know, then the coordinating ministers, the senior ministers, of course, will have portfolios that cut across many ministries. So it's, mm. a, it's, a, it's a hierarchy, mm. but how in that hierarchy we are, are used and deployed uh, yeah. also, is also slightly different. But that, what's that process like? Do you just get an email saying, yo, Janil, for 2022, you're going to be attached to... Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, no, sometimes it's done in... Usually it's done in person. Okay. Oh. A little bit of <laughs> but but yeah. basically you have a say or it is just assigned or... Uh, if I, I, we, we, we are assigned. Oh, you're yeah, assigned. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. see. But I mean, Ministry of Communication, I mean, that's quite, I would say that's quite up your alley in terms of communicating with people and, and being from uh, media and everything, right? Well, um, yes, uh, the, but the, the ministry is not only about that. Okay, uh, yes, so we're yeah. also in terms of sort of uh, developing some of our digitization strategies, yeah. regulating some of the spaces, and then also investing in the infrastructure to be able to support all this. Yeah. Mm. And, and okay, so, so there's, always a, there's always a thought, uh, like, how do how do people who politicians how do they come from a certain uh, background like say medical background and then after that they're put in all these different portfolios that have nothing to do with what they did for their professional lives yeah like how do you get up to speed so quickly like like you know say for example Chan Chun Singh going from MTI and then shooting over to another ministry and ministry, now he's a minister of education and you know he's got got to get up to speed with everything within a matter of days if not weeks uh. Yeah, skills, skills, future, <laughs> skills future, lah. Skills future. Yeah, for skills. Where's the time for skills future? <laughs> if you've got multiple things to do, right? Well, I mean, it's a it's a process that it's not new, right? It's not mm -hmm. just like when I got uh, uh, posted into MCI, then suddenly they got to come up with some idea of how to get this doctor up to speed on MCI. Mm -hmm. It's it's a process which actually our system has been working for the last I don't know fifty sixty years, maybe since independence, yeah. maybe even before independence, where people rotate, and it's that idea that you have. Uh, leadership skills or transferable skills mm. that are useful in multiple areas. Yeah. And then every once in a while, a few years, you, you rotate around. So the, the system then, in a way, is primed to kind of like, oh, okay, you have a new junior political office holder coming yeah. along. Uh, how do we get them up to speed? And yeah. the reality is that in each of our ministries, agencies, the various uh, bodies that we supervise, they are the technical professionals. They, mm. they know uh, everything there is to know about the subject. And... They also understand what is our role, you know. Where is it yep. that we 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 can we can add value? And so then, well, there's a there's really an on uh, onboarding process. They brief sure, us, sure. they give us papers, but it it doesn't stop there. Like yeah. I've been in MCI for several years, uh, it doesn't mean that now I, I know everything about MCI. You know, mm. it's like if a problem crops up, uh, I need to then go and get the background information required to be able to deal with that problem. Mm. So uh, it really is an issue then of a combination where the person moving around the political mm. office holders. Mm. You're really looking at it from what are the transferable key issues in terms of political leadership, mm. managing the issues, managing the people, managing the teams, um, and then adding value to that. And knowing that you are not there to give technical expertise, you know. I mean, mm. I'm in the Ministry of Health. Yeah. I happen to be a doctor, but I'm yeah. not the doctor for Ministry of Health. You know, yeah. there's a whole professional wing out there sure. that, that provide th that expertise. I see. So, so with so much floating around and, and like what you said, politics is always evolving. What keeps you up at night? Uh, like what is your biggest concern now about anything? Well, um, I think uh, th th there are some things which are perennial and there are some things which are mm, recent. Mm, 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 mm. The, the perennial things are reflected in many ways by the shows that I've had a chance to make with CNN. Mm, mm. Um, issues to do with social harmony, race, mm. religion, uh, class inequality. Um, uh, the the sort of age gap, gender not uh, uh, generational gap, you know, where uh, uh, people of my my parents, my grandparents' generation, my generation, my kids' generation, all have very different views on some core issues, and how do we yeah. bring all of that together and stay together as one people? Um, I think that is that's always been an issue that uh, that has uh, has has bugged me. Mm. And then I think the second issue would be um, climate change, and I, and and I think that. Really, that's a it's a long game, but I, I I am really very worried about the extent to which we we will be able to both mitigate and then subsequently adapt. Mm -hmm. And then thirdly is very recent. So those are sort of some perennial issues. The first two. But the third one is really what's been happening in the world recently. I, you know, mm -hmm. and so PM spoken about this um, as part of his trip to the U.S. Uh, the the world is 
shifting in a dangerous direction. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's there's going to be a lot more difficulty for us in Singapore to navigate you mean this. Specifically, what's happening with Russia, Ukraine, or just yeah. overall? Well, it's talking about Oscars or, or yeah, Will Smith. <laughs> that's why I was like, you got to be specific. <laughs> 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 yeah. Dangerous list. Yeah. yeah, Hollywood is evolving. Yeah. Man. Oh. Hollywood is evolving. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes, it's 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 what's happening in Ukraine, but mm. it's. I mean, Ukraine is, also, is, is made possible by what other things are happening in terms of international relations, right? Mm, sure. What's happening in the EU, uh, the US-China situation. The whole uh, Singapore's peace, prosperity, we, we, we play a particular role in globalization. And that trickles down to so many other things that we do inside our own country that mm. leads to our peace and prosperity here. Mm. Um, and so that's going to be difficult for us to navigate in the years to come. And it's, I think, uh, um, an increasing worry of mine. And and just a question, uh, like, how, how do you, um, I mean, I, I worry about climate change every night when I switch on my air conditioner to sleep as well, uh, in, a, in a should I or should I not kind of way. But like when you talk about worrying about climate change, like where, wh how, like how does it existentially, how does it affect your, affect you and, and make you worry, like, you know, like what is it exactly about it? Because you can't feel, like you said, it's a long-term game. You yeah. can't feel the day-to-day -day effects of it. Well, I think it's it's a long game and, and that's part of the issue that I don't think mm. my generation is going to feel the effects. We'll cope, mm. you know, you, you, you it becomes hotter, you turn up the air conditioning, you, yeah. uh, you, you, you but, but then you are creating a further spiral of accelerating mm. climate change as a result. And I know that it's going to affect my children's generation and then maybe their children's generation. Um, and I, I am convinced by the science, which is yeah. that we need to start doing things now in order then to, to, to improve things for them. Mm -hmm. um, but, is increasingly difficult. And I think the, the shifts in the world, it, there is a link actually with what's happening in um, the, the international order, you know, that yeah. how do you go to a country that you don't have good relations with, but then say, okay, now we will agree to deal with climate change together. They will yeah. say, hey, hello, you know, we got bigger things to settle first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do you think Singaporeans care enough about those two issues? Because, you know, we've always had the reputation of being apathetic and like um, um, just not giving a shit about stuff like that, like. I think now it feels like things are changing. You know, this is a whole woke culture. But in general, from your interactions, um, from your walkabouts, you know, do you feel people care enough? I think they do. I think they do. Mm. I, I'm not, I, I don't agree that people are apathetic. I mm. think, I think we, we have a certain, um, I don't know, maybe it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, 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 I think about it, but it's okay, chill, mm. chill. You know, it's like, yeah. we want to a bit downplay our concern. You know, yeah. it's like, uh, you, you, Rather than overhype and be so excited uh, about about these things, mm. but I think people are at that in their hearts really quite concerned, and they, and you get to know people and um, you, you you probe the, uh, the questions a little bit, and I think people will express quite a lot of concern about these issues. Okay. Mm. I, I think people, Singaporeans, we can be quite agitated about these things that we care about. You know, I mean, not mm. just like which yeah. is the best day bang or something. I mean, you know, mm. that's just a training ground for us really caring about some of these social issues. Sure. But have, so, you, have you seen it change over the past five years or past 10 years in being in politics? Yeah, I, when, I, when I first went into politics, you know, there was this thing about how our youth are very apathetic. Mm. Mm. I don't mm. know if you remember. I mean, yeah. and, and, then, but, and, and I was like, like, no, have you met the youth that are like complaining about this and agitating about this? I think today, if you said the youth are apathetic about social issues or policy, mm. no, nobody would believe you. Mm. Yeah. But I think it's not that fundamentally the youth have changed over the last five years or seven years. I think is we have come to a deeper appreciation of what our youth interest and mobilization and uh, engagement with social political issues is. Mm -hmm. And then now we say, well, actually, yeah, they're quite woke, huh? very, very involved. So I think it's going to be the same, that the way in which we express our concerns and the way in which we deal with our concerns, we are not the West, lah, you know? Mm -hmm. And so if your norm is set by what you watch online, and yeah. then you turn around and you say, hey, why is Singapore not like this? Like, well, yeah. well, because we're Singapore, you know? It's like yeah. yeah, it's like that line in, uh, what's that, 300? This is Singapore. No, yeah. <laughs> no, no we, 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 talk, we were asking you a lot about your, your origins in terms of like, uh, when was your political awakening, so to speak? Because uh, I think for us, it, it matters a lot in terms of uh, trying to chart a path for young people going forward. Like if you are very passionate or interested in something, is joining politics necessarily the the one thing that you should do or being an activist or, you know, doing what you're meant to do in the world, like joining finance or being a doctor and all these things. How, how do you think, like for you yourself, like when was your, this awakening that, okay, I, I need to think of larger problems of the world to and try and solve these things as opposed to continuing my practice as a, a medical practitioner, you know? Well, well firstly, I, I think you, you shouldn't go in on the basis that 
you know, having a real job or being an activist or being a, a, a politician are somehow all delinked from each other. Mm. We're, we're all part of the same society, you know. And as a as a politician, uh, I have to have a very close ground, uh, close uh, connection with what is happening with people with, you know, with jobs, you know, yeah. like mm. what is it that's allowing them to have that fulfillment, uh, get their their jobs done, build our economy, but also look up, they can look after their family and, and look after their businesses. Mm-hmm. The, the two are not unlinked. Mm. They, are, they are linked. And the people who are not, in a way, officially of, involved in politics, actually we all are involved in politics because we all yeah. have a view on the issues, right? And then yeah. we all mm. vote. Um, and it's the same with activism. You know, you, you, are, you may or may not want to be a political representative. That mm. doesn't mean that you are, if you're not, it doesn't mean you're not in politics. Because mm. everything that we do in politics uh, is on the basis of a team of people that we have, of activists and volunteers mm-hmm. and, uh, uh, and, and, and political uh, mobilizers, right? Yeah. Um, so it's not so clean the line between the three. Mm. I, I, and I think we all have to play a role in, in all the, the different spaces that we work in. Mm. But I think your question is really then, when did I decide to might, I might stand as a political representative? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I, I can't say that I had a long, uh, um, uh, you know, all my life I've been thinking about it. Actually, no, yeah. most of my life has been the other direction. I've been quite focused on medicine and, and, mm. and, and mm. the work that I was doing in education. Um, uh, so it's really, I think, uh, about 2000 and... 2008 or 2009, uh, somewhere around there. Yeah, I think it was 2008. Um, I and I started volunteering at uh, at Radin Mas uh, uh, okay, uh, okay. with uh, Sam Tan, who's the MT, MP then. Mm. Uh, and uh, it was it was one of those things where I was uh, I had sort of finished my training. I had I'd become fairly senior in in my uh, in my uh, work at the hospital and at, at the medical school, and mm. I, I kind of like in a way I. I I had those portfolios and those things to do. Yeah. And and when you're at a certain level of seniority, those portfolios take on a five year horizon, right? Or mm. you know, it's not like I gotta get this cert in one year's time or I gotta finish sure. this. It's like, well, I'm doing this developmental work over five years. Mm. Uh, and I was looking to do something a little bit different in the community. Uh, so a friend suggested that I go and volunteer at Santan's Meet the People session. And it's like, you know, this is like it's like basically telling me you will have no idea what you're walking into. Mm, but if you're looking mm. to do something completely different from what you have done in medicine, I'm yeah. telling you this is it. Yeah. I was like, okay, how I like how mm. I like seriously, really how you know. Um uh so I turned up for one of those uh, meet the people sessions. I and I and I volunteered with uh, Sam. And yeah, I was, I was like, yeah, okay, this is completely different. It was really a, a whole set of issues, a whole set of challenges that that I had not been so aware of before. Mm, mm, mm. Um, there was an opportunity to learn so much about about what was happening and uh, affecting the people that we were helping, yeah. the policies behind it, but also the programs. So it just took me off on that track. Mm. Mm. So since it was a gradual thing, it wasn't like like one specific incident. No, no, no. There was no uh, the the lightning didn't fall and strike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, no pun intended there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a gradual thing. It was, it was a gradual really, thing. I think it's interesting because. Uh, you know, we talk about, like when we study in the US, I have uh, friends from university who are like, oh, you know, I'm very interested in politics. I want to go and volunteer and be on this particular senator's campaign to get into Senate and everything. Whereas in Singapore, it, it's really, um, yeah, you don't get that kind of thing. Where, oh, I'm going to be the social media person for Dr. Janiel and, and, and then we'll help him through the campaign and all these things. It always starts from the ground, on the ground, like meet the people sessions and, and really about talking to everyday people on the streets. Why, why do you think there's such a huge emphasis on, you know, being on the ground and talking to people in Singapore versus, you know, finding a political political career by volunteering for a campaign or anything like that? I, I don't think the two are mutually exclusive and I don't mm. think we uh, actually lack people in the second category. Oh, and right. actually, if you look at people who are in politics, some of them started because they believed about particular causes. Mm. Uh, so if you look at some of the MPs, they started yeah. their journey because they were campaigning for something very specific. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, one particular policy issue, one particular uh, thing that they cared about. Mm. But once they started, they then got, in a way, involved in se- several areas. And the reality is that the two are complementary to each other. You want to go mm. and help with a campaign, yeah. your campaign has to reflect the concerns of the ground. Mm. Uh, you're going to go and engage the ground. Uh, well, some stage you need to be able to translate that into action and that may require political campaigning. Yeah. Um, so I do have people who volunteer um, and just come along and say, look, I want to help with your campaign. I want to help yeah. with, uh, with the election process. But actually most of the people come along and say, uh, I want to volunteer with you because I care about this issue. I see. Some of it's a, a ground issue. Some of it's something local in their estate. But 
increasingly there are people who say, look, I, I want to have uh, my views reflected yeah, um, yep. in parliament. Um, so, for example, the things that we did on climate change, mm. um, you know, we had a, a paper that we, we wrote, uh, a political paper uh, mm, from, mm. Our, from the party wing. Uh, and there were people who wanted to step forward and yeah. said, look, I, I have views about climate change. I have views about how Singapore can navigate this space. Yeah. I want to now come and engage with you, help you write the paper, yep. make sure my views are there. So I think we are, we are moving in that direction, but it's not either or. Okay. Because okay. I would tell, so tell a young person like that, Okay, that's great. You know, you helped me write the paper, and you know the the young PAP uh, submitted the paper. But then, not everybody agrees with your view. You know, mm. uh, you're gonna have to then go back out to the ground and say, yeah. how do you now convince people that this is the right way to go? So the high level campaign and the ground engagement actually are are, are, oh. are, are linked. Okay, I'm only asking because I I have friends who are you know they they think about issues. They they we talk about about it on WhatsApp and everything. And I mean, there's smart people. You know, jobs in tech companies and all these things. And I say, hey, you know, you're interested in these issues. Why don't you go into politics? Then they tell me, I don't want to go on the ground and have to attend meet people sessions and all these things. Do you think these people are suited for politics? Uh, <laughs> you put it to me like that. It's very hard. <laughs> there's only one answer, you know. I, 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 if you, I mean, uh, you know, what if there's only one friend on your WhatsApp chat? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, the reality is you cannot be a politician mm. op, o, o, only worried about high level issues, you know. You, you mm. have to be able to go and persuade people and engage with people. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. you have to have your high level issues reflect the issues on the ground. So you may want to start thinking about these uh, wonderful uh, uh, ideas and yeah. concepts, but you have to be able to translate it on into the ground. The ground. But the the reverse is also true, you know. If you mm. think you're very good on the ground, you have to be able to take it and then move bring it, it up, to to bring it to parliament or bring it to high level issues. You need both. Mm. Mm. But you, mm. but you don't think that 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 sort of uh, limits the talent pool that you can you can pull into politics because I mean there are some people they just really not made to they they're not the most sociable people they they can't they can't hold a conversation but they're so smart and brilliant and about you know policy and things like that. But we can. But there's many ways to get involved in politics. It's not mm. just about whether you stand as an MP or become a political representative. You, you, we ha have set up so many, uh, you know, focus group discussions, mm. conversations, dialogues, committees, and forums, precisely mm. so that we can engage with this talent pool that's out there. Yeah. So that your ideas can then be reflected. I mean, so we have these alliances for action, the SG Together movement, but. I mean, the, 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 the different structures are not the issue. It is the intent behind it. And our intent mm. behind it is quite clearly, yeah, it's not just about the guy who's uh, uh, standing up in parliament making a speech, you know? There's mm. a whole series of people and talent out there engaged mm. in issues, and we have to be able to bring that together. Mm. Mm. So, so, so given that, yeah, like what you said, it's so multifaceted, the role. Is there, how do you, is there a particular type of content you, you consume to just, understand global issues? Are there podcasts you listen to, videos or authors you read or biographies? What's your, what's your jam there? I think it's, I, well, I take the view that I need a little bit of everything so that you mm. don't get kind of like pigeonholed into one worldview, yeah. you know? You, yeah. you, if you only listen to your podcast, you have a... You get a brilliant yeah, worldview. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Cover everything, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I make it a part. I mean, I, I, there's some periodicals I like to read I, and then mm. books mm. and podcasts. Uh, I'm not so good on watching broadcast TV, you know. It's, uh, mm. I'm oh. sorry to say, you know, those, but it, it, it's like I've, I, I, I don't actually own a TV. Uh, so, so you don't watch your own show? Your own show? I download it. I know. Oh, okay, I see. Okay. I, so I, it's that whole asynchronous, uh, like, you know, yes, yes, on time, yes. on target, right? You okay. do mm. streaming kind of thing. So I'm fully, fully on, the, on, 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 on with that. I, I don't sort of like, oh, it's, but by the way, it's 9 p.m. on now. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. um, so I, I, I do. I watch quite a lot of things, read quite a lot of things. Um, Probably more reading than watching. More. But the key thing, I think, is to read from authors or uh, viewpoints which also challenge your, your view, Don't, not just mm. reinforce, mm. so that you get a wider view of things. So, I mean, speaking of challenging your view, right? Like when we opened up um, the questions to our listeners on Reddit, um, there were a lot of comments or questions about things that you have already been questioned a lot about. Uh. Like the one of the most popular ones was about the whole Trace Together thing, mm. right? Mm. So, I mean... Everybody has their thoughts on Trace Together. How how do you navigate? Or what's what's your role, or how do you think about it? Because sometimes I do agree, unpopular decisions do need to be made. But sometimes there's also the balance between okay, are we being too conservative, too progressive? How do you how do you manage all that? Like even for now, do you wear a mask outdoors? 
The Mask Outdoors. Yeah. Well, no, Mask Outdoors. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, uh, no. The last mm. couple of days, I went for a you know, went for a run, went for mm. a walk. I, I've been unmasked. Yeah. Uh, do no, people, run, do run, you don't have to walk. You don't yeah. have to wear anyway. Do but, people yeah. look at you funny and like judge you and all? Um, well, I wasn't wearing my glasses, so I don't know what they. Look. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they, they may be making eyes at me. No, I'm kidding. I I yeah. don't think so. I don't mm. think so. I I and I and. The last couple of days, I, every day I see more people unmasked outside, right? So it's, mm. there's a certain comfort level that people are, uh, in a way, adjusting to. Yeah. Mm. Um, and the thing is, I think we shouldn't be so judgy. You know, you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. La. I mm. mean, uh, you know, mm. the guy wants to wear a mask outdoors, even if he's allowed not to, give him a break. That's mm. me. That's me. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, it's yeah. like, it's okay. I mean, and I think that's actually a far more healthy uh, approach that we get to the point where, well, you have decided you want to wear a mask. Yeah. Then you have taken some responsibility, either because you think you're vulnerable or because you're sick and you want to protect the people around you. Good for mm. you, you know. Mm. So we don't judge you. Then, then uh, it's it's a much more healthy kind of um, yeah. um, engagement. But yeah, but um, I you know, the masks and trace together are very different. Uh, very yeah. Different issues. So, so then mask thing, yeah, then mask thing uh, separate before the trace together thing, right? Because I mean, sometimes. It's it's cool that you mentioned that part of a politician's role is to communicate and convince. Sometimes I feel the stuff that comes out in uh, by government Facebook pages or even politicians themselves, it does more harm than than good la. So when it comes to trace together, such a polarizing thing. What is how how are you how do you how are you managing that? Because there are a lot of people who are asking, why do we still need trace together? Yeah. Well, but part of the reason why we are not, we are able to ask the question now mm. is because we have come through the pandemic. Well, better than we had expected, right? Or yeah, better than, yeah. than many people had feared. Yeah. Um, and so, okay, now cases are coming down. Uh, the ho- situation in the hospitals, while still a challenging, it's on an improvement path. Um, we know that uh, we've been able to be relatively successful. Mm. And so now people say, well, how can we like, stand down, trace together, mm. stand down? Mm. Uh, uh, so not, not wrong to ask, but we must consider why we are in this position mm. where actually we we were able to uh, reduce the number of deaths compared to many other places in the world. Um, our healthcare system continued operating compared to many other places in the world. Yeah. And trace together and our contact tracing was a key part of that. Mm. So no, no uh, program or strategy or device is correct for all time in all circumstances. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. like was it the right thing to do at the time, and is it the right thing to do now? Mm. So at that time when we we were we were uh, moving on trace together. We, we were at a position where we were not yet fully vaccinated. Mm. M- most people were not vaccinated. We were just getting our vaccination program rolling, yeah. right? And so we had a very aggressive approach towards contact tracing to protect us. And the only mm. way you can do that, the super aggressive, fast contact tracing was to use something like Trace Together. Mm. So, okay, now if today we didn't have Trace Together and we are 95% vaccinated and our healthcare system is working, would we do the same thing? I, I mean, of course, the balance is going to be different, right? Mm-hmm. But was it the correct thing to do at that time? I would 100% say yes, because it allowed us to really ring fence the cases and cut the clusters, you know? So as soon as the cluster cropped up, you, you prevented it from further spreading. Yeah. Of course, then eventually, um, uh, Delta came along and that broke through those types of defenses and Omicron mm-hmm. even more so. But doing it for the first few waves meant it bought us a lot of time and yeah. in that time, we got everyone vaccinated. Mm, mm. So you basically imagine if we had the kind of outbreaks that we had for Delta and Omicron, but you had it eight months earlier, before we had everybody vaccinated, hey, we'd be singing a very different story now. Yeah. Today. Mm, yeah. And we're like, wait, why you didn't go so more aggressive on test together? You know, you know mm. it, it's a, it would be a, why did you not do more in that space? Mm. So the, the fact that today we're asking, being asked to dial it down is a measure of its success. Mm. Mm. So then today, well, trace together. We've already said line like, Parliament. It's not really about contact tracing anymore. It's about the vaccine differentiated measures. That's the key reason that we have to keep the program in place. Mm. Simply because to s- stand up a whole new infra for vaccine differentiated measures, it's just going to cost a lot more yeah. rather than using the infra that we already have for trace together, also for vaccine differentiated measures. Um, so then now our thinking has to be when we no longer need the vaccine differentiated measures, then we we'll take trace together away. Mm. Mm. So then, another question relating to trace together. Do you think having the authors there are making them feel very entitled? 
the otters, otters. they are yeah, having yeah. a darn good time you know yeah. like I think Trace Together track. Trace yeah. Together has played a part la, I, so I, no, I think it's not just Trace Together you know it's yeah. the whole Instagram thing these yeah. guys I mean I just, I just want to like like you put it to you as influencers you know yeah. do you think they put in the hard work to deserve the influence they have today the otters the otters I used to think so yeah. but recently I've been turning la. I've been but, turning but they, they what they do is they they're, um, they're scars la. you don't see them that as often yeah. you know they come out when they need to come out I see. and show their face I so see. it's a bit like the whole swatch thing and that you know it's not li- <laughs> I mean it's not it's not limited edition but because of the you know the supply chain issues and I all that see. there is some scarcity there so people still treat them like ooh otters yeah. Yeah. Oh, once there's an influx of otters then people will be like I get see. so out. they understand about the overexposure yeah. 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 must be a little bit uh, careful about who you go and uh, go yeah. on which podcast uh? yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> no so just to bring it back to the serious side of Trace Together like you know now even now it's still very polarizing like even for me my thoughts are uh, I'm, I'm, I, I, I go like I ping pong here and there like but before you make a statement about Trace Together, do you already know that, ah, oh, fuck, people, there's going to be backlash, there's going to be this, but we have to say what we have to say? Or do you sometimes feel like there's stuff that maybe the public shouldn't, like, can't know about the, the full extent that you can't share? And is that ever frustrating? You know? No, the reality is that any difficult, challenging political issue, mm. no, no one is always, there's not, not it's going to be a 100% agreement. There's mm. always going to be people who mm. disagree with you and there's always going to be people who will benefit or agree with you. Um, and so we have to manage that space. And mm. so mm. we can't wait and only put out a policy when 100% people agree. Nothing will happen. Mm. But it has to be that you take a view that this is the correct thing to do now and there's enough support that we can move and implement this and then over time, people will see that there's a benefit mm. and ultimately it will benefit us all. Uh, mm. So th- that's the nature of, of these types of things. I mean, if, if it was so easy that we knew that there was no backlash, yeah. it wouldn't yeah. be at, 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 at that level that we have to deal with it. Yeah, yeah. Actually, actually uh, kind of related to, to where our healthcare system is at all. Like recently, that whole fiasco with uh, Wake Up Singapore and, and KKH uh, you know, and all that, I felt that it was a very, um, you know, we talk about POFMA and we joke about it on it. But actually, it was a really uh, rough, I think it was really rough for frontliners when that news of KKH and, I mean, alleged uh, miscarriage and everything happened. Uh. So can you just walk us through your thoughts about when when a piece of news like that comes out and, and how it affects, it, you know, potentially affects morale of like frontliners and all these things, especially since you are, you were a medical pr- practitioner and you know yeah. how things are on the ground as well. Well, when something like this comes out, I mean, first thing is, nobody assumes that it's a complete lie, you know? Mm. The, yeah, the, exactly, the people yeah. are scrambling to to to, to uh, locate the, the the facts, find yeah. the case files, uh, who's this, or who's the doctor, who's... Yeah. And I can imagine the healthcare professionals are all sitting there like, was this my patient? Did I, yeah. did I, did I like mess up and something happened? And, it, and you can imagine that a lot of staff personnel, uh, man hours spent trying to chase this down mm. uh, uh, and at the same time scrambling to ensure that such a thing never happens again. And then to find out that it's a complete fabrication. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I mean you, you, you really will uh, chip away at morale like this. That yeah. you, you feel a sense of being under attack for what? Yeah. Mm. Especially in the same week that you know, we're saying that, oh, Singapore is moving on and opening up and yeah. our healthcare system can take it. Then you read news like that. Because I mean, uh, my, my wife, you know, she's in all these WhatsApp groups with other mothers. And all that. And they're, oh my God, you know, this thing happened. And it gets everybody really riled up and yeah. scared. Huh? Then, then suddenly they realize, oh shit, we were just taken for a ride. And even though we are, we say, you know, we're opening up, we're liberalizing, we're taking masks off and all this outdoors, our healthcare system is still working very, very hard. Mm-hmm. This, what we call the business as usual debt, right? All the cases that we were not able to, 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 to clear as quickly in, in COVID and now the impact of COVID together. So, you know, my, my colleagues, my friends in the emergency departments and the hospitals, they are working flat out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not like they are suddenly on holiday and then, uh, you know, party time or, you know, uh, yeah. it's, uh, it's they, are, they are still holding the line, but that's requiring a hell of a lot of effort. So they, they really don't need this on their plate. Yeah. yeah. So, so when, I mean, like um, when you being so uh, involved with the healthcare system and having been so involved, when you see things like, you know, clap for our healthcare workers, health, uh, frontline workers and all, what do you think about that? Well, it's not wrong for the sentiment, right? I mean, people, yeah. people want to 
uh, express their support. People want yeah. to express. Their, so, okay, what can they do? You know. So I think I understand where you're coming from. You're thinking like, is this lame? Is it? Oh, no, I'm just curious. I mean, oh, come on, I saw that smile. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm more than willing to share my thoughts as well. Okay. But maybe you can go first. No, but but I think if we if we take the view that everything is lame or not worth it, yeah. it then nothing gets done, lah. Yeah. Yeah. Cynical, lah. Very cynical. Hey, you know? I haven't <laughs> shared my thoughts yet. I, I calm, can, I can, calm, I can, I can, I, I, <laughs> It's like the way you're like creeping up to that topic, man. I'm like, <laughs> no. So, uh, I mean, yeah, the cynical view would be, okay, you, you uh, come clip for me or for what, mm. right? But the reality is that people want to express their support, want yeah. to express their, mm. uh, their, their solidarity. You've got to allow that to happen. And, mm. and I think nothing wrong in encouraging it. Yeah. But then if you think that, but if you get sucked into the idea that now that you've done it, you've ticked the box and then we move on and that's the end of the story, then okay, la, then mm. you've fallen into that. That, that, that sort of value signaling type of trap. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, so, mean, I, I mean, no, so how, far, my, how far are you going to go with this burn? You know, because you can say the same about influencers, you know? No. It's like, well, you make a podcast, then you fix the world's problems. Is it? So first of all, like, can I clarify that? Both of you speak about, oh, don't judge. You all just judge me just by the fact that I ask a question. Because my sentiments are similar to yours. So like, oh, okay, like in the sense that, okay, then it's almost like if you want to help, you have to go all the way. Like little gestures don't count, which I also think is not a good mm. way to cannot be so to right? encourage. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, you got to have a middle ground. Yeah, you got to have a middle ground. Uh, but of course, the the flip side of that is like what you said. Like if it just becomes oh now I feel good because I've clapped, I've done my part to support the healthcare workers. That's fucked up, like, You know. But I think this is why when I see certain sentiments that we have spoken about, also when people show sympathy towards. Uh, an incident that happens in in a country like when we we did a podcast about the Notre Dame uh, church that that fell down and there was an outpouring of like um, support not fell down got burned in a fire then there were people who said oh you care about this but you don't care about something mm. else in some other country and we're like I mean at least they are caring about something right there's no there's no hierarchy of caring certain problems yes are more urgent but that's when I see people even shitting on oh this clap for 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 healthline workers blah uh, frontline workers is is useless, you know. I don't agree with that. Yeah, you know, but but the, yeah. the truth is, uh, the last two years, right? Yeah, there were a lot of accidental instances where we felt very proud to be Singaporean, mm. and it weren't all these clap for frontliners. It was like when I went to get my second jab, and mm. I sat there waiting for you know like to see if any side effects. I wanted to stand up and say the pledge at that point. Uh. Oh, same. It's just like yeah, there's some, yeah. some, something about just how quiet, how efficient, how the whole thing was. Friday night, I go to a community center, I get a, a jab that you know people other countries cannot get. I just felt like. Well, oh, this is the real NDP that wow, we're talking I'm about. I'm getting goosebumps, man. No, I'm like, so I, I, want, I want to ask you, <laughs> what, have there, has there been an instance in the last two years that made you like, wow, I'm super proud of this moment as Every a day, every day he gets up, yeah. Well done, bro, well done. <laughs> Politician. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Every day. Didn't yeah. miss the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, last two years, any any particular moment you remember that you felt? Uh, we, many, you know, honestly, mm. very many. I, I mm. have to say, I had a similar feeling when I get to men, went to get uh, my booster mm, or you know, booster. took my kids or whatever I mean it's just it's just that you know we're in the middle of a crisis mm, yeah. and this thing gets done you know hey no fuss no yeah, drama no we just get it nothing, done yeah. you know just get it all done uh, but but you know I remember reading um, um, uh, a story uh, online about the SQ flights coming mm. back with hardly anybody in it yeah, yeah. and uh, and you know the Singaporeans who were stranded overseas uh, and then able to come back and then like I'm, I'm trying to, I think it was a flight from New Zealand or, or, or I, I can't be so sure. Yeah. But I remember reading about it and the person had like described the difficulty of, of uh, getting, getting, the, get, getting out of, yeah. getting out of wherever they were, right? Trying yeah, to get home yeah. to their parents and get home to their family. And, and, the, and, and in the, in the blog post, you know, the, that sense of how, when you step onto a SQ flight, mm. right? I mean, it's a real cliche, right? I mean, I also feel it, right? Whenever yeah, yeah, you're yeah, yeah. coming mm. there, you, it's welcome like, welcome home. Yeah. Welcome home. And it's yeah. like, and, in peacetime, like if it's 2018, 2017, you'd be like, oh yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, can yeah. I have a, you know, yeah. a, you, know uh, you know, whatever, wet yeah. towel or my, my drink or whatever, right? I mean, you, you're, they're, they're, they're trying so hard, but the reality is it really does feel like that, you know? Yeah. Like you step onto the plane mm. and you do feel like suddenly you're part of Singapore, yeah, right? Yeah. So then I was reading this blog post and I just like, I can imagine that feeling because I know what it's like. And can you imagine then having felt that you were stranded and isolated somewhere else mm. and then you got into this flight I think they said there were only like four or six people on this flight mm. and they had all this crew looking after them. And mm. I, I tell you that really like, oh, wow, brought a, a, a choke to my, oh. because, you know, it meant that SQ and SIA and Singapore, we kept up all of these lifelines mm. and mm. we were able to bring Singaporeans home. Yeah. Uh, that's not a small thing, you know. It, and yeah, that, that's, yeah. that was a national effort to remain connected to the world, a national mm. effort to be able to bring people home. 
So mm. it's like from this biggest thing across the world, right down to the fact that how we did things to get our jab. Yeah. I was like, yeah, 101 different ways, man. Over the last two years, I felt very, very proud. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. So, so, so why NDP is still like that? Uh? <laughs> NDP is still like <laughs> what? Open <laughs> ended question. Open ended <laughs> question. Fair, to be fair, another one of those moments was when they spread out the, you know, the fireworks yeah, yeah, yeah. and you could see it from your home, from your balcony, if you live high enough. Like. Yeah. And that kind of thing, that was also a very nice moment that, that we had in the last couple of years. Yeah. I'm, I'm really glad that we kept on celebrating NDP. Yeah. Mm. You know, I mean, okay, yeah, it was not exactly the same, but mm. it's like, okay, we, we just have to market, make the effort to market and, mm. you know, it's remind the world, but also remind ourselves, you know, like yeah. we, we ain't stopping this. Mm. Mm. So that, that was, that was also quite, I mean, a thousand and one moving moments. Like. Yeah. There's yeah. another one, there's another one I'm going to tell you where I, I, I went to visit the, I don't think one of the, one of our immigration facilities. Yeah. Um, uh, it was at the border. I think it was one of the road border and there was a screening center, right? So the screening center, you know, all the, the nursing staff are all in the PPE and yeah. everyone is yeah. gloved up and I also have to be gloved up. And, 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 you know, you can, um, uh, wearing PPE is really uncomfortable, mm. you know, yeah. you've been there for a while. And so there's, you can sort of, you know, it's body language, you can spot the person who's comfortable and then chill and the person who's like really on edge. Yeah. Maybe it's the on edge because I'm there, I don't know. No. But anyway, so <laughs> then I saw these two nursing staff, right? And one of them was clearly, you know, a bit more uh, inexperienced and agitated. And I sort of said, oh, so, you know, uh, is this your first time deployed yeah. in such a situation? And it's like, yeah. yes, uh, you know, wearing PPE and all this kind of stuff. Uh, how do you find it? It says, oh, yeah, you know, uh, Quite worried lah, because you know you're, mm. you're worried, you're exposing yourself. I said, well, you know, um, uh, well, we we went through it all in SARS, you know, and and yeah. and that's where we learned about some of these techniques. So so you know, I I hope, uh, and, and so she was quite, you know, in a way trying to be calm, but you could see she mm. was really not comfortable. Yeah. Then I turned to the next one, much more senior, mm. and I said, what about you? And she says, no, 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 I was already doing this at SARS, no problem. We know what to do. And it was just a handful of words, you know, but the quiet confidence of that frontliner mm. saying, hey, I, I, I got this already. Yeah. And, mm. and, and, then, and then she said, so, well, those of us have done it before, we have to teach all the young ones lah, and let them know it'll be okay. Mm. You know, and it's that, it's that kind of, we, we have, we, we, we do quiet confidence well, I think. Mm. Uh, and I, and, I, and that, that makes me very so, proud. So, but are there any specific things done within the healthcare system that keeps people's morale up? Because, I mean, we have seen instances over the past few months where there's a certain policy change or certain comment and yeah, you get anonymous blog posts from people on the front line. Like. But um, what, what are some of the things that are done to keep up the morale? So I think uh, uh, end of last year, we had yeah. this uh, whole period of time where um, we took an extra special effort to try to uh, rotate people on shifts and mm. uh, bulk up some of the um, uh, support services so that people yeah. can take leave and take some downtime yeah. makes a yeah. big difference. So, so I think that, that mm. made a big difference. Um, I think uh, when uh, there was a, a recognition nationally that like our ICUs and our EDs, just how much they were they were under pressure. I, I think sometimes it's just knowing that people know, mm. you know, mm. uh, and that, that people take it seriously that you are struggling and you are uh, under pressure. I think that, that made a difference. So certainly from the WhatsApps that I got uh, from my colleagues, that made a difference as well. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, even for us, right, like, like people are saying that, uh, our, I mean, I'm not trying to say that them good or whatever, but listening to but our you podcast. Are. But, yeah. you know, but, but just having the, the continuity of our podcast yeah, yeah, yeah. through the whole period of whatever uh, circuit breaker and all these things help people just normalize their lives a little bit. Like. Absolutely. And then, yeah. like what you said, like, just knowing that life goes on and having marking NDP and all these things. That's all right. those are actually very important to keep yeah. things moving. And, and also the fact that we also talk about the issues with the healthcare, like, like certain things that they voice out, we also try to talk yeah. about it and acknowledge it because certain things, um, I think there was a, some communications that came out that felt, um, I think it was a specific podcast we did on a letter by who? Uh, 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 Ongi Kang. Uh, Ongi, Ongi Kang, Kang yeah. yeah. So that one, I think there was a lot of chatter online and we kind of talked about it as well and that's, that's where I feel like sometimes the communications could be so much better uh, but sometimes it shoots them, uh, themselves in the foot like. Um, so, so sometimes it's about just catharsis la, just yeah. talking about it and making sure it's acknowledged and out there yeah, yeah. so so I mean, you know now like we are coming out like what you said right so mm. what is your your concerns going forward about with regards to the pandemic or how we are opening up because yesterday was a 
Tuesday was a big step, right? Mm-hmm. What are, what are some of your concerns? Do, do you go to Club Key to go and like ten thirty one beer? No, I did not. <laughs> for the tiger, the tiger no, beer one. Right? Solidarity. <laughs> we have free tiger beer for free one tiger minute. Tiger beer for one minute. <laughs> no, 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 I did not. But maybe I should have. No, yeah. uh, no. Well, uh, firstly, my first worry is: uh, is it truly over or not? Mm. Because there are parts of the world where this is not a settled matter, and we, yeah. as we're opening up, well, we have to keep our watch up and our guard up. Yeah. Um, secondly, if we are hit ever again in the future with another wave, um, whether we will have the, the social cohesion and the wherewithal to do this the same way. Mm. I mean, we always, like, you know, it's like a stock trader, right? A past performance does not indicate future returns. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like just the fact that we did it well for the last two years, uh, Singapore's hung, Singaporeans hung together and, and sort of had this sort of singular vision about how we were going to do it. Mm. Um, will that happen again in the future? I hope so. I really don't hope so. Mm. But one of the things, if I sort of, flip my switch, right? And I think of it like as a citizen rather than as a politician. You know, if you told me, well, everybody masks up and then no, uh, only two people dining out or no dining out. I mean, I remember thinking at the time, well, yeah, it's only for three months or four months. Mm. Hey, we can tahan lah, mm, right? Yeah, yeah. But if at that time you told me it was going to be for two and yes. a half years, I'm, you know, so, so part of the problem is now having been through it for so long. Yeah. If we have another wave, uh, what's our response going to be? And, and I really hope we hang together and we, we, we perform the same way that we have done in the past. If we can do that, we'll be okay. And we'll, be, we'll have ups and downs. Mm. Um, the third thing is, well, uh, you know, well, I, I think people are, are, are looking forward to traveling again and this sort of this whole tr- attempt to try to harmonize the way in which we, we, we do all the checks and travels, right? Mm. Um, it's a, in a way a good uh, proxy or analogy for the extent to which well we need to do a lot of things across borders to harmonize you know and, and not a such smooth sailing as we talked about for, for a variety of reasons Ukraine China yeah. and geopolitics and so forth I see I see okay wow. so so then like um, I mean shit what did I want to ask huh? I got thrown off sorry sorry, sorry. I forgot no I forgot I what I wanted to say no 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 it was off the tail wait uh, I mean yeah, I got a, I got a blank, blank. You got thrown off uh, of, of, of your question. <laughs> yeah. Shit, what the hell did I want to ask? See, this is, yeah. This so this is, is the, the bit that gets edited out? Uh, no, 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 no. We leave it in. We leave it in. Leave it in. Yeah, huh? we leave it in. This is what happens. But I yeah, see, if you have see. anything. No, I mean, oh, no. Uh, I, I, I guess uh, it's interesting to hear uh, your perspective given, uh, you know, your, your medical background and everything. Uh. Mm. But does it ever feel um, in parliament, like sometimes because you are, the one with the medical background and, and you know, uh, out of public. And not, not, you weren't like a civil servant for life and everything came in. Uh. Do you feel sometimes you you need to spend a bit more time uh, also explaining to other members of parliament about certain things re- with regards to COVID and the science behind it and all these things? Well, I think the COVID and the science behind it, um, quite, there's quite a lot of other people doing a lot of explanations mm-hmm. as well. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, okay. if you look at uh, director of medical services, yeah. uh, p- people in the, the academic side and everything. I mean, so there's no lack of people explaining and mm-hmm. uh, making the science and things available. Um, so so I, 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 it's not something that I say I must be the only one doing it. I don't know that I'm necessarily always the okay. best one to do it. Okay. But I must also play my part. Lah. So where yeah. the opportunity is there, I must mm-hmm. also add to that. How do we achieve clarity on some of these issues as well? I see, I see. Yeah, but I mean, I, I don't know whether your, your question was on the basis of I've not been in politics or civil service. So, but I'm not the only one, you know. There's yeah. many politicians come in from uh, um, private field, sector, yeah. not not just medical field, but just the the, the general private sector. You know, the people okay. who've been in business or, or done things. Okay. Um. So yeah, we we have to learn how the civil service works. We yeah. have to learn how the political process works, how the parliamentary process works. Um. But Again, it's a path well trodden, right? Mm. I mean, we're not the first one by a long way. Yeah. Mm. Um, and we will keep doing so. I mean, politically, you always want a mix, right? Some people who have a civil service background, yeah. some people who have a, a private sector background, some people come from all kinds of other professions. And okay. then it's the team then that, yeah. that, that, that adds value. But, but is there anything, so, so I guess what I was getting at is, is there anything in particular that, uh, especially when new MPs come, come on board and, you know, first day in parliament, all these things, is there uh, something in particular that you, you feel that nobody prepares them for, uh, especially in, on that first that first parliamentary sitting or that first speech you're giving. Uh, well, that, that you should that you feel like you know in two thousand eleven you wish someone also told you told you these things. Uh. 
Uh, yeah, like a ton, you know, I got a whole long list, how much time you have, you know, it's like just making my first parliamentary speech, it's it's really quite, quite off-putting because, yeah. you know, you have people who are facing you, people who are mm -hmm. behind you, and then your face is on this big screen looking right back at you. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. So Because so recently there were quite a number of new MPs doing yeah. speeches, and then there were some online, you know, uh, responses like, huh? How come got crying, got talk about uh, bubble, bubble tea, tea and, and yeah. some of these issues? So, like, how, how do you help these younger MPs navigate these? these murky waters. Well, I, I, I think firstly, you don't want to get to the stage where everybody makes the same speech, right? I mean, mm. then we all sound the same. We all say the yeah. same thing. It's like, then you all stop looking for all yeah. kinds of other reasons. Um, so I think we have to create space for people to uh, behave a bit as authentic as they, as they, as, as they are and, mm. and, and then give voice to whatever it is that they, that they care about. I mean, yeah. I'm just like holding about, are we mm. being judgmental? Are we like super judgy? Uh, right? uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, um, and, and I, and I, so, I think that's one, that's the first thing going in, right? Okay. You want you want the MPs to be able to give voice to the things that they care about, things that their constituents care about, most importantly, yeah. and do it in the way that they are comfortable and authentic with. Mm. Mm. Um, and then over time, people kind of settle into a groove. You know, you find your own voice. It's like it's like I mean, you know, the first podcast you guys made, or yeah. Yeah. first time you appear on TV. I mean, it's just, so I mean. The way I speak in parliament today, I'm sure it's not the same way I spoke in 2011 when I made my first parliamentary speech, mm. Mm. and you kind of find out what works for you and all the new MPs will will, will do the same. Mm. Yeah, you know, I mean, nobody comes to you because you are like the, the comms guy, the guy who's on TV and, and hosted the show. And Ask me for pro tips. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you no, are, can no, I pick no. your brain over yeah, a come, I mean, first thing is they know that the show is all heavily edited. You know? <laughs> uh, it's like, did you use Photoshop for that? It's like, <laughs> well, so it's actually quite a, it's quite a lonely endeavor in the sense like you, you're, you're thrown in a deep end to give your first speech and nobody's like... And people don't really react, like, right? Like, you can't... It's not like a stand-up comedy yeah. club. You you don't make jokes and people don't laugh. And yeah. like, the, the, just... the reaction in the chamber is quite muted. And yeah. that's the nature of it. You know, it's not... You know, the audience is Singapore and Singaporeans, right? So we yeah. are... All, so, the 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 if you are if you if you guys go in right and you're like yeah. whoa this is a, this crowd is dead man mm. <laughs> yeah. like, everybody it's say hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tough crowd, tough crowd. wave your hands in the air like you just don't care <laughs> ain't gonna happen yeah yeah, yeah yeah we don't even clap you know we like we yeah. like thump, thump yeah, our yeah, seats yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. so it's a little yeah, bit yeah, yeah. so so they yeah it's not quite the same if you go in there as a as a media personality but I did it right and most of us don't so. Uh, but it's not so lonely because it's not that we don't talk about it, mm. uh, and, and, it's, and and many of us have, you know, we, we have teams with people who give inputs, and mm. so um, you know, it's not you're not isolated or lonely, but it's not this, it's not analogous to media performing or mm. uh, I can imagine, you know, like suddenly my experience with CNA, right? Every word that you say, someone got something to say, right? Say, hey, yeah. why you more, flop that line like and that? More energy, more energy, more, more energy. energy, more energy. And then, hey, not so excited. Come down, come down. Like, hey, <laughs> what you say you want, right? <laughs> So it's not like that. It's not, okay. it's not like that. And in a way, I think we, well, our, our Singapore, we have a, a certain sense of uh, decorum and, mm, and partly correct, we are yeah. not incentivized to do the wayang like some other parts and, of the world, yeah. right? Where, mm. So in a way you say, well, what's the substance of what you say, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's not a bad thing to have, la, mm. where, where the, the parliamentarians want to need but, to focus but, on the substance. But when the decision was made to live stream it, did that change the dynamics or your own... Preparation for it. Um, I think we were we were well. I think people were thinking about it whether it would change. Uh, I I think it has changed a, some behaviors, not so much on the parliamentarians because I think we we then kind of like adapted and converted. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the fact is, with a live stream now, people can can uh, capture the live stream and use it in instantly. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So I think what it changed was the way in which people then engage in the social media commentary. The kind of like derivative second order uh, content creation, right? That, that yeah. where how you then uh, tape, capture, and then push that out in, in social media fairly swiftly afterwards. Mm. So I think that's the aspect that's changed, mm -hmm. uh, rather than necessarily what happens inside the chamber. No, but who's to say what will happen? You know, in the, in the near but, future. But was it a very marked change? Because for me, I always felt like 2016, the moment Trump became president, that's when suddenly everybody watched yeah, like tricks, political uh, speeches yeah, yeah. and then every, we are always hearing for everything even in Singapore and then we started to really analyse like everything every speech and every movement that the politicians are making do you feel mm. like there was that big change during that period well, or? I, I'm not sure well I, I don't know how many people 
actually watch the live stream? <laughs> <laughs> mm, they watch snippets, lah. They, they watch, watch snippets, snippets, right? Yeah. 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 But, but I mean, but like even like the you know, committee of privileges and all these things, you know, yeah. the, the videos yeah. were number one on Correct. YouTube. But it's know. the videos you see. So uh, that's the, so that's the thing. It's not that the so the so we have to be very clear in our mind what it is that's tr- triggering the interest and what it is that people are engaging with. And absolutely, I, I my my sense is that in general they are far more interested in the snippets that are coming out. Mm. Mm. So the stuff that, uh, you know, the, 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 the news uh, kind of like clips and inc- includes all that we ourselves clip and then put up on our social media mm, or, yeah. or that parliament then archives rather than sitting and watching the entire live stream. Mm. I, I think the people who watch the entire live stream is very, very few. I mean, my mom maybe la, but you know, it's like, <laughs> mm. <laughs> mom, are you watching this? No, uh, mm. uh, Regardless of race, like, reg- she's definitely watching. Well, she, that one she has to watch. Mm. But, but, but I think the... Um, what has changed is the way in which people use video to then engage with the political process. Mm. Because then when we upload it, I think people do go and look at it mm, uh, mm. and then search it out, you know, and then mm. uh, scroll to the right bits and then people will put comments, you know, the inter- you know yeah. he swears at two minutes and 13 seconds. Yeah. Or, you know. um, uh, so I think uh, the, in a way, the shift towards live streaming yeah. has made us much more conscious of the extent to which we have to make the content available for people to engage with. Mm. And I think that's happening. And I think that's happening. Mm. So, so you know, like now, I think what is sometimes very riveting is seeing politicians or, I mean, uh, the MPs go head to head, right? But what happens after that when they exit? Because I've heard stories of like, oh, in the past, you know, there was no difference. Everyone get, grabs a drink after no, that. They play know. football. They play football after play that. Play football, right? yeah. <laughs> after <laughs> something like that. Yeah, but because now, like like what Terence said, I think when, when Trump became president, politis- politics almost became... A bit more theatrical, yeah. Um, and I think people kind of like that shit, like you know, they like conflict. But what happens after that? Is that does the tension carry on, or like, like it's just part and parcel of a job? Well, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think our our politics is not like um, in other parts of the mm, world, right? Mm, mm, mm. Um, and I know I've met and heard about parliamentarians in other parts of the world where it's it's really theatrics to the point where they really don't care. They li- they are literally having a, a drink in the pub afterwards saying, mm. okay, uh, next time I will I will say this and you will say this. Mm. We do, that's not, we don't engage with this, right? So the stuff that you see as us being head to head or mm. uh, having a disagreement, um, it's substantive. It's because I disagree with you mm. and he disagrees mm. with me. But I think we all go in there knowing why we do this, right? We, we, have, a, we have a duty to discharge uh, to mm. our party, to our constituents, to our country, to the constitution, to the parliament. Um, so it's not necessarily done with rancor, you know. We, we, yeah. uh, it's not like afterwards in the in the corridor we're like, oh, 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 <laughs> looking at me, uh, no. it, it's not, you know. <laughs> 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 Bro, <laughs> me, take yeah, it no. outside, uh, take it outside. Take uh. out. No, it's like we're 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 polite. We're, we are mm. we are. Uh, and, and we know because we are in each other's shoes, right? I mean, yeah. we're all parliamentarians together. We all have a, a job and a duty to discharge. So we're polite, we're engaging. And frankly, we have business to do, you know? It's like, okay, and then tomorrow, you know, your, what's your timing and stuff? So we have to continually engage. So mm. it's not that, there's no kind of like- uh, There's no know. PAP cheer outside before. Well, the, the yeah, WP cheer. Yeah. No, 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 it doesn't work like that. It's business, it, it's, it's work to be done, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, it may look, at, and, the, and the, in truth, it means, you know, people have to understand that when we are uh, expressing ourselves mm. is because we care about it, not because we're trying to like uh, put on a good show for you guys to go and then mm. do mm. your podcast on, you know. Mm. But but the fact that we care about it doesn't mean that the other guy also doesn't care about it, right? We both care about it. So now, well, well how do we get to the substance of 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 trying to get some the the real things done for Singapore? Mm. I see, I see. Okay, okay. But when you see the football the football matches returning, oh, I don't think I can play anymore. Right? It's just like years ago. I, I'm getting it. No, leave I, it to the next bunch of MPs. No, oh, okay. no, I remember the question that. I blanked out just now because yes. you were talking about your concerns going forward. Uh, this is going to be like an open-ended thing, but has 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 you want to answer? Like, do you think Singapore is getting more divided? Because you seem like a fairly optimistic person. Mm. Sometimes when I look online, I look at the comments. I'm like, oh fuck, man, we are just more divided than what we used to be like. But do you have that sentiment? Do you agree, disagree, or? I think it can look like that. Mm. And I think for some people, it, there is an advantage to make it look like that. I mean, it, it gives, well, frankly, it gives you a lot of stuff to write about and talk mm. about and, mm. and podcast about, right? Yeah. Otherwise, it's like, yeah, everybody agrees. Yeah. yeah that's uh, our podcast done. Thanks. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. um, but I think in general, um, political uh, polarization is part of the process, right? Mm. I, it is. You are, you either vote for this party or you vote for that party. Um, you either vote for this position or you vote for that position. But you, you 
you we do, we certainly don't want to have the culture war type of approach where well because you voted for this position then for everything else you are I'm against you yeah mm, mm. right I mean we have to get to the point where well after the election is over well then we got to get work done and we got to build Singapore and 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 help Singaporeans mm. um and and that applies to all Singaporeans so I, I'm a MP on the ground I represent a constituency I represent every person in the constituency not just the one that voted for me mm, mm. right. So that's the kind of attitude that we have to we have to go in for, and 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 what was the kind of attitude we hope Singaporeans will engage with as well. Otherwise, mm, you yeah. it, it becomes a very unworkable system, you know. Mm, mm, mm. Then our podcast will just be yalla. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, no but, yeah, no but, yeah. but, but, but. I mean, we're coming up to the 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 hard stop time. But yeah. I mean, there's a very divisive topic that we need to get out of the way. Will Smith. Are you? <laughs> can we get your thoughts? We're uh, actually going to edit it out. Edit out everything, lah. <laughs> the why why we just got you here is to hear your thoughts on, on that. Will Smith. Uh, that's Will the that's Smith. the key yeah. thing. No, right? But but it's a very big thing that I think uh you know a lot of people are very divided on both people I respect and people whose opinions I differ with. They have very different opinions about it. So it's very interesting to hear what generally what people think about it, lah. Well, where do you stand on I, that? I I um I well firstly I I'm uh, as a as a media consumer I mm. I mean I was really a, a fan of Will Smith yeah. you know and he's mm. from Prince from right from the days of Fresh Prince yeah. mm. that's right um and he's a he's a as an actor and as a performer super talented so, you know yeah. he's really really talented so he let himself down with that with that mm. momentary lapse of reason you know mm-hmm. um, uh, quoting Pink Floyd there but um it it was the wrong thing to do mm. and uh, it was the wrong way to do it. Um, now he came up with a uh, with a an apology. Uh, I think on his Instagram feed I saw it. Mm, right? mm, but, so that that apology that he put on his Instagram feed and his um, uh, the sentiment that's expressed. Okay, it's, it's uh, mm. it, quite classy and quite well done. If only he had done it at the time. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you know, and his speech. Well, uh, it's really bizarre, right? I mean, <laughs> the guy just did this crazy thing on stage, and then yeah. he's given us uh, uh, an award by the Academy. Um, but he did. I think already at that time, in the way he expressed himself, clearly regret what he had done, mm. um, and um, I think he could have ex- he could have handled his apology better right there and then. Um, he didn't, uh, uh, but but I think there's no doubt in my mind that he has expressed quite a lot of contrition and regret and apology all the way along. Mm. So wrong, and people do wrong things. Then when they say sorry, well, we have to we have to kind of uh, engage with that process in good faith. So you don't think mm. he should be stripped of his Oscar or? Kicked out the academy or anything? I, do you think it should be should he be punished like it? Well, uh, thankfully, I don't have to write their policy and their SOP, yeah, right? Because uh, I mean, I presume that they would have to take a view, not just on that act, right? Because you cannot mm. make a rule for one person for one act. You have to say, well, then does that mean that every actor who's ever slapped anybody? Uh, get stripped of their award mm. or is it only if you're then subsequently charged you get stripped of the award or, anything, or only if you are then convicted you get stripped of the mm, award right yeah. the fact that it happened on stage and on camera yeah. uh, actually you shouldn't that shouldn't be part of the discussion right yeah. and frankly I mean, you guys will know the details the ins and out there are tons of people with awards and actors out there mm, who have done all kinds of crazy things yeah. uh, in their personal life right yeah uh, did they all get stripped of their awards and so I think this is a there's a, there's a real Practical uh, difficulty that the that the academy is going to have to deal mm-hmm. with. Thankfully, I'm not in anything to do with them or mm-hmm. their position. Uh, I think the 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 least helpful thing to do would be just to either to make a decision one way or the other purely as as virtue signaling, mm-hmm. right? I mean, you you've got to set up what your principle is, and then you got to say, and now I test my principle against what has happened in the world, yeah, mm-hmm. right. So if your principle is that the 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 award is for acting and everything else other than acting doesn't count, well then you hold to that principle, nah. mm. But if your if your principle is that the award is for acting and being a role model oh, in society, yeah. then, then you got to draw a different line and you yeah, got to say, yeah. well, you know, if you're convicted, or then I take a, a certain view, or you behave in a certain way, then I have a process, and it must be due process. Otherwise, it becomes mm. arbitrary. Is there going to be another line in the parliamentary guidelines? Please don't slap uh, your <laughs> fellow MPs. Uh, if I have to, if I have to write that line, if I have to actually write that line, I got a bigger problem, you know. Although I do think there is something in the in the standing orders about uh, physical un- uh, unparliamentary behavior. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. must have a certain amount. Must of, be updated. Uh, must be uh, updated. Yeah. <laughs> but I think if you got to go down and specify, uh, just to be clear, for the avoidance of doubt, unparliamentary behavior includes. Uh, then I think we got a bigger problem. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, with, uh, here's a sample video. Yeah. Do not do. Uh, <laughs> do not uh, <laughs> negative example follows. <laughs> yeah. I, but I think we're all on the same page. Though. Yeah. He, I mean, Will Smith. We all grew up watching yeah. him, and 
it's just a very sad moment to see someone lose his lose his cool like that. And right? and it's indefensible, uh, regardless yeah. of what he's going through internally, emotionally, mentally, it's yeah. indefensible. I mean, yeah. I mean, the, 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 that line of is there a line, a family line that that cannot be crossed? That you, no, but you have to then ask whether Chris Rock knew about it. He's like, was he just making a joke about a haircut? Mm, I mean, you know, yeah. uh, or oh, did he actually understand the, the the thing that was being medical condition at all? That's mm. right. That's right. So I mean, uh, these are unknowbles, right? I mean, yeah. or maybe Chris will Rock will one day say something. In his upcoming stand up tour. But the thing is, yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, you're right. Whatever it is, but whatever it is, that type of of, of uh, resort to violence this is inexcusable. Yeah. Uh. It's, it's yeah. terrible. Yeah. yeah, terrible. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but Will Smith. I mean, I mean, I, yeah. Yeah, he was a fa- I was a fan, man. Yeah, yeah. We I think many people were. Yeah. 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 It's broken a whole bunch of YouTube records for the most number of views in 24 hours. Goodness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we are approaching the hard stop. This has been yeah. quite a quite a conversation. Yeah. But um, we still have that one segment at the end that we yeah, always do. Which is the one shook thing. We've given you a heads up. Um, yeah. We'll give you a few more minutes as we share our one shook things. Yeah. yeah. What, yeah. Um, Terrence, would you like to go first? No, no. Why don't you, why don't you go first? Eh? <laughs> I need to... Uh, Okay, so, hmm, one shook thing. What is my one shook thing? Oh, the I guess the one shook thing from the past few days is that uh, Portugal qualified for the World Cup again. Lah. Um, I was thinking about getting up for the game, uh, Portugal versus North uh, Macedonia, but in the end, I didn't. But uh, it's just happy to know that another team with someone like Ronaldo is going to be there at the World Cup because Italy is not going to be at the World Cup. Mm. Um, and the game, the highlights, uh, it was, uh, he set up the goal for Bruno Fernandes. So as a Menu fan, it's nice to see. But I think, yeah, like, it's it's kind of interesting, this World Cup, because there's no global leader right now for, for men's football. Uh. There's no one country that's dominating everything. So I think the World Cup this year is going to be pretty pretty damn exciting. Uh. Yeah. So that was my one shock thing. Uh, my one shock thing was so football related. Mm. The fact that Singapore... Uh, just won all their matches in the tri mm. I don't know whether it's a friendly series or I think it's a friendly series. Uh, but the cool yeah. thing is that we had three fundies on oh. the pitch at the same time. Which I mean, I, I'm like, oh, wow, what, 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 in what country in the world does... does three the siblings. Team, uh. Yeah, have the three siblings are one of the greatest players our country has ever seen. Uh, and just something very uh, uniquely Singapore about that. Yeah. Know, keeping it all in the family and all. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. So that's my one shook thing. Uh. All right. Uh, Honourable Janil. Mine is very prosaic, you know. Uh, <laughs> please, please, yeah. Just, just walking to the... the Walking to... The, <laughs> there was a, a plate of chashu rice that I had that I... <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> but I think it was oh, the... Is, fact, <laughs> no, no, it's great. Honourable... Yeah. Uh, an honourable... <laughs> but it was... It's it a low-fat chashu rice No, it or? wasn't. No, it wasn't. It was just the fact that I was able to walk there with my mask off. Mm. <laughs> oh. Not feel any guilt. Uh, you know, and uh, and 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 it was just it's that appreciation that uh, slowly life is uh, returning to normal. So uh, it was a late lunch because I'd, mm. I'd missed lunch, right? And uh, I quickly parked and and I was like, okay, you know, uh, I, I just need something. I know this is just your stall there. Yeah. Uh, I I don't think I can advertise on uh, no. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. influencer, <laughs> influencer. Yeah. Yeah. So it was it was the, it was just that thing where you're like, you know, you know when you get a bit hangry, a bit hungry, yeah, yeah, and you're a bit yeah. rushing for yeah. time, right? Yeah. yeah. So then I was like, this whole kind of like, okay, I, I gotta I gotta quickly makan so that I can get to my next thing. Yeah. And then as I'm getting out of the car, I was like, oh darn, I forgot my. Oh no, I don't need my mask. Mm. And it was like, mm. wow, just that. <laughs> As that thought appeared in my head, I yeah. don't need my mask, mm. and I'm walking along to the to the hawker center. Yeah. And then as I, I'm like, oh, this is just awesome. Yeah. This is awesome. And, and and it was just that combination of that moment of not needing my mask, and I was really quite hungry, but it was a really good play of just your eyes. Uh, yeah. So I, I don't know. Sometimes it's the little things, and uh, we got to make sure that we appreciate the little things as well. well mm. No, it's true. It's true. Yeah. The Tuesday, uh, Tuesday was a very like oh like I uh, felt I was in an, another dimension. Yeah. Seeing yeah. people walk around without masks. You know? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Wow. All right. Hey, thanks a lot for having yeah, me, guys. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, oh, it has been awesome. super fun. The time flew by. Yeah. Um, and I guess the last thing to give a shout out to is the show, regardless of race, uh, five years on, that there is going to debut on CNA on 31st March and 1st April, 9 p.m. It will be available on YouTube uh, at the same time. Mm. And it's two 45-minute episodes. Two 45-minute episodes, Ooh. Thursday and Friday, yeah. Ooh. And we hardly talked about the fact that you guys were on the show oh, yeah, yeah, on yeah, both true. the episodes. Yeah, you know? that's true, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah you got no, it. Uh, we, we didn't know that, we didn't know that. We, yeah. we, we, were, we were subject to the editors. No, no, uh, no, no, no. Catch Harish and Terrence on Regardless of Race, okay. five years on. Awesome. 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 Cool. All right. Cool. Thank you so much for coming, well, man. Thank you. It was really thank a blast. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Peace.